What's going on everybody? In this video, I am going to be talking about four pillars of the vinyl and music community that have been seemingly torpedoed over the last few months. And I wanna discuss what's going on with them and my thoughts about it, and then hopefully get your thoughts in the comments below. This is kind of crazy that this is all kind of happening in the same short time span. And if you aren't familiar with what's happening to these sites, hopefully this video will be what you need to stay informed and maybe even help you make a difference in these sites futures. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please consider doing so. My name is Matt. I run a record store called Too Many Records in Portland, Oregon. I have about 500 videos here on YouTube, so I hope you'll join me for all the future videos I have to put out. Now, the first entity I'm going to talk about is Discogs, and I did a video on Discogs earlier this year. I am not going to retread all the ground that I tread in that video. If you'd like to watch it, you can click right above and see it for yourself. I think it's a pretty good video. It is a little harsh, and I've talked about Discogs since the inception of this channel as one of the most useful tools for cataloging and learning about records. However, it is not without massive flaws that I outlined in that video. The comments in that video seemed to echo my sentiments, so I think that I was onto something. But it wasn't until an article from The Verge started making the rounds a couple weeks ago that basically echoed all of the sentiments from my video that I started to think maybe my opinion piece actually had a bit of weight to it. This section is a response to that piece, as well as some additional information based on things that have happened since then. On a day-to-day -day level using Discogs, my biggest gripe with them is the absolute nightmare wild, wild west that is their marketplace in the current state that it's in right now. I touched on this in the other video, but since then, even though they made a statement saying they were working on it, every single day has been seemingly worse and worse with an onslaught of fake sellers selling fake records. And I don't know if this is the same for everybody that uses the site. It's going to be heavily dependent on how often you use the want list, as well as what kind of records are in your want list. If you have a lot of really rare records, especially popular ones, there is no doubt that you have seen a deluge of records coming up that are obviously fake, way too low priced from sellers with bad or no reputation, new sellers on the site. It is every single day I am navigating this minefield of different sellers that are very obviously fake trying to actually get to the records on the want list that I might actually want to buy. I'm getting very good at navigating this problem, but I think a lot of people that are newer to the hobby are probably falling prey to these scams because it's so prevalent. The want list is my favorite feature of Discogs outside of maybe just selling records. And this problem makes it a very unpleasant experience to use on a day-to-day -day basis. I talk to people in my record store who have been caught by this scam, who have purchased something way underpriced and lost their money or had to do a PayPal dispute, a whole nightmare for somebody who's just getting into the hobby. This shouldn't be something that you have to navigate through when you're just trying to utilize a site to find records you want. And the the other frustrating part as a seller is that all of this data, all of these records that are sold and then not actually sent because they were fake and there were disputes and the people got their money back or they didn't get their money back, that sales data is not being scrubbed. And if it is, it is a very spotty, inefficient scrubbing from the sales history. So when I'm trying to price a record, it is very difficult to look at the sales history and see a bunch of fake data in conjunction with the real data and also have my buyers looking at that same data who if they aren't as privy to what's going on, they may think that my record is wildly overpriced when it's actually the market value. I'm sure a ton of sellers are dealing with this right now and it really sucks. As I was going through the Verge article, truth be told, I thought they were gonna link to my video because everything they said was exactly what I had said months prior on my YouTube video, but they actually quoted a viral tweet that is now unfortunately deleted that also seemed to have been just saying every point I made in my video, including the point about Discogs seeming like they were priming themselves to be purchased, which seemed very specific, but I'm not here to hem and haw about who gets credit for what. I just think the message is the most important thing, getting out the message that there's something very wrong here. The takeaways from the article are that the old technology on the site is extremely fatiguing, which it is. I hope they're making some strides to make it a little more updated, but I haven't really seen anything drastic yet other than a seller tool to help you raise and lower your prices in bulk, which is something that I said we needed in my video. So maybe that was a direct response to that. The thing I didn't mention in the last video about fees being up to 9% is that they're also dipping on the shipping, which I don't think any other site does that. It feels very offensive and it feels like it's an attack on sellers to dip your fee into not just the sale price, but the shipping price of the item. Their initial response to that was to tell sellers to offer free shipping to get around that. 
I don't even have the words to describe how insulting that is. And finally, this happened not that long after my video and I have very strong opinions on it and I wish I had a screenshot, but I don't have it anymore. They were doing a summer flash sale, their first ever, I don't know, it seems to be a little similar to NASDAQ's flash drops that they do. Maybe uh, they were taking note from the competition. But that being said, the flash sale was to highlight independent sellers on the site, give discounts across their store to allow people to get great deals at those sellers' Discogs pages. Great in theory, right? Every store featured in their initial flash drop were some of the largest stores on the platform. The worst of which, the biggest offender, was a sale for Pop Market. Pop Market is literally a cancer for small record stores. They buy in such bulk, almost as if they're Amazon, and no one could ever compete with the prices that they offer for distro. Stores will get beat out left and right just because of how much money they have to throw around as a mega corporation compared to your average record store. That's part of the reason why my store doesn't even do distro. How do you compete with a monolith like that? Well, Pop Market was one of those independent sellers they were featuring, and every seller on the list was just as large and didn't really need the exposure as a store like mine or any other small store that utilizes Discogs to help their business. This felt like a complete slap in the face. I feel like they completely missed the plot. It was very, very frustrating and ultimately embarrassing to see that unfold. So Discogs isn't dying necessarily, but it certainly is not thriving. With the scamming being so rampant, I don't know what they're going to do to combat this. I can't imagine why Discogs is not doing something in a larger way to combat this thing that I'm seeing every single day with different sellers and the same records. I'm not sure what the future of Discogs holds for buyers and sellers, but as of now, I am not super optimistic. Let's talk about Crates. Crates is a crowdfunded vinyl platform. I have been using them for a very long time. With my record label, I have done 15 completed projects with them. I've had an amazing experience up till this year, and every product I've received from them has looked and sounded fantastic. My last three projects are all wrapped up, totally funded, and as of this video, I have absolutely no information as to if and when they are shipping. The oldest unshipped product is 10 months old, my Neutral Milk Motel release. And whether it's the customer support or the actual email chain that I am on with some of the higher ups in crates, because I've been with them for so long, I have some of those contacts, nobody is giving me a straight answer. All they could do is redirect to a generic form response or tell me that there was a hack Something got hacked with their shipping logistics provider, and that's all they're saying. They can't even give an estimated time frame as to when these are shipping. And as you can imagine, I have people that purchase the records as well as the artists asking me for information on almost a weekly basis. I don't have the information. I'm trying to get it. I got nothing. Now, I thought, you know what? They're going to figure this out. This is just a delay. We'll figure this out. But then I saw something really disturbing on their most recent Instagram post, Wolfpack responded. Now, Wolfpack is a massive band. They play Madison Square Garden. They have a huge following. They're awesome. And they press a lot of their releases through crates. And I'm talking tens of thousands of copies versus my three to 500 copies. They commented and said this. Now, when I read this and I saw that Wolfpack couldn't even get a response, my initial feeling was, oh my God, is crates going under? Now, I don't know if that's the case. I sincerely hope it's not because in situations like that, there's a lot of outcomes and some of them are really bad where everybody loses their money. And I don't want to say that's going to happen. I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm just trying to prepare everyone and show that something bad is happening and nobody is getting the answers they need. Now, I understand accidents happen, hacks happen, companies have to deal with things of this magnitude, but the number one thing you do in those moments is PR. You have to do good PR. And what they're doing is not just insulting, it is unhelpful and it's disturbing because there's so much money tied up from so many projects. They're still operating and taking new projects every day from their site. I don't know what to say. I'm very disappointed in this site. And I just want to say, be careful if you use them moving forward until they come out with some kind of massive apology and actionable change from what's been currently happening. I don't know if that's gonna happen, and if that doesn't, I don't know if I can in good conscience work with them moving forward with my label. But my biggest hope is that everybody who's ordered my last three releases get the records and the artists can appreciate what I tried to do for them. And I hope that Crates doesn't really just go under the way I think there's a chance they might be. 
The cult of Mondo was so huge, they had to start their own convention. From records to screen print posters to figurines, they were really cornering the collectibles market and putting out products that people loved to buy. I was always excited for the next Mondo drop and everything they did was with the utmost care. Also, the staff members that I had the pleasure of meeting at different cons and events throughout the years were all so cool. A little while back, some news hit the internet and made some waves that Mondo was being purchased by Funko. Now, Funko is a company that makes all those Funko Pops that you see literally everywhere. Um, the definition of manufactured collectibles, basically the complete opposite of what Mondo stands for, which is high quality, limited run, really cool, authentic things for fans. Funko just feels like the Beanie Babies of the 2010s. To make matters worse, almost immediately Funko laid off half of Mondo's staff. The bulk of this was to their poster division. Mondo posters were the cream of the crop in the screen print community, and this was an absolutely devastating loss to see this happen to people that have been working so hard for so long. A few months later, Mo, the heart and soul of Mondo, left. Spencer Hickman, who was the head of Death Waltz and also merged with Mondo, he left. Shannon Smith, the music label manager, also left. These three titans left Mondo on their own accord I guess they saw the writing on the wall, and I think that we as fans are about to see that writing over the next couple months or years. Yes, they just put out That Thing You Do, which is an amazing soundtrack that needed a vinyl release. That was the thing that Mo wanted to release the most, and it came out right after he left the company. That feels so insulting and so unfortunate. And I think that happened as the last great thing that the old guard did before the new guard took up whatever is left of Mondo. Uh, Funko Mondo. And I just feel like moving forward, there is going to be a rise in inauthenticity and we're going to lose what made Mondo Mondo. That said, I do hope in the future these great people band together and form another company that really captures the essence that Mondo had at the start and we can begin anew with an amazing collectible entity that does great vinyl and great posters and maybe other things too. Bandcamp has been an extremely useful resource for music fans and artists for many years. Providing a way to share music extremely easily, it is a seemingly endless rabbit hole of amazing music discovery. Also, Bandcamp Friday is an amazing thing where every now and then there's a Friday that 100% of the profit goes directly to the artist. It certainly encourages me to buy more records on that day. The writers for Bandcamp are so thorough and so smart, I always found great recommendations when I went through their articles for new bands to check out, which ultimately led to new records to buy. In 2022, Bandcamp was purchased by Epic Games, which is most known for their juggernaut Fortnite. This seemed like a really weird acquisition, and for about a year, nothing really happened, which was very strange to sit at the sidelines and watch. And just in the past few weeks, Epic sold Bandcamp to Song Trader. Right before that though, Epic Games had some massive layoffs, including a huge portion of Bandcamp staff. A large portion of the staff that was laid off was their incredible editorial team. They truly are top of the line. I genuinely enjoyed all the work they put out over the years. And to see this happen to a company that was so full of heart and so important and powerful within this community was absolutely devastating to see. People that are worried about the Song Trader merger seem to be worried about Song Trader's assets versus art mentality, where we might start seeing Bandcamp through a little bit more of a capitalistic viewpoint than we did before, which is not good for anybody involved. Well, maybe Song Trader. All of this is very recent though, and I think we're gonna have to see what happens because this was just a few weeks ago, but in my gut, I'm worried this is the end. So all of this is to say, what is happening? What is going on to these pillars of the music and vinyl community? Everything seems to be shaken from the core. Things are being rearranged, gutted, stripped for parts. These companies have been major parts of my vinyl journey in all different ways, and I'm sure they've been parts of yours as well. I just have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach about all of these things, and I would love to get all of your thoughts in the comments below about any or all of these companies and what's happened to them over the past couple years. So. This is a video that hopefully informed you and shared some stuff you might not know. I know this was a bit of a downer, but I think it's important information to share and I wanna use my platform to spread awareness because maybe we can band together and do something to help these ships from not sinking into the sea. Maybe that's idealistic, but at the very least, I'm trying to spread the word. I look forward to talking with you all in the comments below and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.